God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we sit in your presence knowing very well that because we came, God, you are going to speak to us, you are going to minister to us, oh God. You can use anything, use Eugenia Kegwa this morning to speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You may take your seat. Uh, as you have told, I'm Wilson Kegwa. That, those are, that is my name. Wilson Mwaneki Kegwa. And I am a member of this church. But I'm not a parent. That is why you didn't see me walk out there. But I have decided to make a difference in someone else's life. A bull look at your neighbor and ask them, what are you doing for others? Wait for an answer. Thank you so much. Uh, I am trying to acclimatize because the class eight sang my song. The song I wanted us to sing with them, they have sung. See, they have taken very, they, we were together in the spirit. Because what I will talk about here today, I believe is my journey. So, it's a blessed assurance. Class eight. How are you, class eight? Ebu, stand up and we hear. How are you, class eight? How are you, class eight? That is our slogan. Train hard and win the battle easily. Have you heard that before? That is our slogan. You train hard and win the battle easily. This is a military camp. Uh, which, who are we? Yes, Cornerstone, the best school in Nairobi. You must believe what you want to become. Thank you, Class 8. May God bless you. And now we go to the word. I would like to ask my wife, wherever she is seated, to stand. For those who don't know my wife, she is there. She is Beatrice Mwaneki. All of you call her Beatrice Kegwa. I have two sons who should be here also. Uh, I don't know where they are seated also. Victor and Emmanuel. Oh, they are up. They are up there. Thank you, guys. Then I also have a daughter. She's called Waidera. She is in uh, Form 1. And that is uh, my world so far. Uh, we should not say uh, until we are very old. Cindy? Yes, yes, yes. Now, I want us to go to the word. Um, I am normally not a preacher on the pulpit. I have a lot of followers somewhere. One of them is Pastor Wangombe. He's one of my congregants. He's there. I, I do a lot of writing on the, on the social media. He's one of them, actually, who follows me. So today, if you find that I'm not comfortable here, please ask Wangombe how to join my group. I also have my pastor here, I'm sure I can see her, and a key supporter, uh, on Rabukinoti, I can see him there. He was in the first service, but when he heard I'm the one preaching, he came back. Can you clap for him? <laughs> Thank you, Mwesh Miwa. Now, we, our topic today, I may not do a lot of movement, because I do a lot of movement on the fingers when I'm writing the, the online one. So I may not do a lot of uh, movement, uh, uh, but I will try my level best. Our hope in challenging situation. That is our topic today. Our hope in challenging situation. Our text first will come from Genesis 1, 1 to 5. Genesis 1, 1 to 5. And we look at the New King James Version. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was all over the face of the deep. And the spirits of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, and God saw that the right was good, and God separated the right from... No, no I, have, I have jumped somewhere. Let there be 
right. And there was right. Then he saw it was good. If you go to verse 5, God called the day, the right day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning. That was the first day. I don't know whether you have ever thought that God had a charge. Have you ever thought God had a charge anywhere? Do you know that God faced three serious challenges at the beginning? One of them, the earth was formless. A look at your neighbor and tell them that was the first challenge God had. The earth was formless. The second one was the earth was empty. Imagine, the earth was empty. And then the third, the third one was which one? You know, darkness was all over the face of the deep. I don't know whether you, you can get my point. Is that all of us face challenges. They may come in terms you don't know the form. You don't know, you actually feel you are empty. Is it true? Do you feel sometimes you are empty? Do you see darkness even when there is light? That is how God saw. But in the midst of all these challenges, the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. That is what we have been told in the first uh, verses there. And then the entire challenge, the challenging situation, what was required was the word of God. Or God, did God go and start pushing the water around? He said, let there be. You remember? Do you remember our verse Three, the one I wanted to jump, let there be light, and there was light. So, currently, you may be, I don't know what kind of challenges you are facing yourself. They could be family, they could be schoolwork, like uh, the class eight we have here, they could be financial, but remember, what is required is the word. And whose word? Word of God. So, in that situation, when we were reading, we found that that situation was actually hopeless. If you find yourself in uh, formless, in uh, empty. I, at this point, I want to give you a story of myself. So you allow me to acclimatize as we continue. I give you a story of myself. When I was very small, very, very small, I was last in class, and I told class eight, they know that story. I was last. Uh, can you imagine an engineer studying here, certified by the University of Nairobi as an engineer, who was last in class? I know all your parents have never been last to your children. But the actual sense is that maybe you are last. But me, I tell my children, they know. My boys are up there, they know. I was last in class. That was class six. And then I repeated class six because I was last. And when I repeated as last, I was last first term. I'm sure you are wondering what a dumb engineer is he. I wasn't. I was the most brilliant boy in that school. But I was last. It was not my making. I told them. The issue was that whenever we go to class, the first lesson was mathematics. And the teacher would come and tell us to say multiplication tables. And then my question was, how does 5 times 4 come to 20? The question is not that it is 20. I know. I want to know how. Because God had formed me to be an engineer from the beginning. I wanted to know how. In fact, I used to listen to the small radio and I wonder how do people fit inside the radio? Do they grow smaller to fit inside? So this is, this is, that, that is the story of my life. I was last. I know you want to know how I became number one thereafter. The truth is, on, after repeating, a Mr. Disho came after the current teacher was promoted to be a headmaster in a new school. Can you ask your neighbor, do you pray for you, the one who is hindering your, your growth to be promoted? Ebu, ask him. <laughs> eh, pastor, ask your wife, do you, eh, <laughs> do you ask that they are promoted? Not that they are sacked. He was promoted to go and head a new school. 
and Mr. Disho came in, and the first day he came, he said multiplication tables, and I asked him how. The same question I used to ask last year, the first time I asked, and this is second term May, and I asked the same question. And Mr. Disho looked at me, and he asked me to go out and come with five sticks, one meter long. So I thought, I'm now finished. This one is not even beating me with one, but five. But since I was a brilliant boy, I decided I'll come with, uh, in Greek, they are called my goya. I don't know, you tell your neighbor what it means. They are soft, they, they are used for fence. And uh, if, you hit, if you are hit by one, you can't even feel pain and it will get broken. So what happened is that I came with exactly one meter, five pieces. And then he called every pupil in class and we sat in front and he told me, you, break each one of them four times. Each four. And then he asked me to count how many are they. And I found they are 20. That is how I started to be number one. That time I became number one. I became number one in class seven. I went to high school. I was number one. I was number one through university. Why? I was top in the engineering class. Just because the teacher was promoted. Can you tell your neighbor? The teacher was promoted. <laughs> so, what I, can, what I can learn from this is that I was empowered. Is it true? I was empowered by the new teacher. And therefore, my there was hope in this challenging situation. Is, was there hope? But I didn't know. Even for our class eight, there is hope. I want us to look at now, we will have, uh, I will talk, I hope I have time to do this. I wanted to become like the preacher in the online, the one for Pastor Wangombe is my follower, but they don't, they don't pay tithe. So talk nicely to Pastor. We agreed that they will be paying to his number, not mine. I don't know whether, do they send something? They don't. <laughs> some of them are international, so I was expecting some dollars to come through. Now, um, I have uh, created this hope, our hope in challenging situation. We look at various, various subsections. One of them is that we are empowered to impact. So you can write down those who are writing down, we are empowered to impact. Why was I empowered by my teacher? We can look at the scripture readings of Genesis 1, 26 to 31, and then Romans 8. Would you please uh, Genesis 1, 26 to 31. We start with that. Then God said, let us make man in our own image, according to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. And so, said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, I see I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be food. Also, to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food, and so, and it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So, the evening and the morning were the sixth day. I am sure you know this story. Even the other story in Romans 8, 19 to 20, you know it very well. Now, what I want to ask yourself, what did God do when he created man? He actually empowered him for impact. Can you hear me clearly? 
He powered man for impact. The first thing God did is he created us in his own image. This makes us recognizable by other creation as rulers of the dominion. Remember God told us to take dominion. What is dominion? Is to have impact. The other thing, the, other, the second thing that God did is to breathe into us. Giving us some, somewhat of his own kind of life. And that is why you have to talk to your situation. Remember where we talked in the beginning about formless. If you have the life of God, then you have, you can, your words can build. Is it true? They can also destroy. And that is why you are told you have the, the power is in your tongue. The third one God did is that God blessed us by his word to have dominion over the earth. Okay? Are we together? So, we have realized that God made us to have impact on this earth. And therefore, when he made you and he puts the man in, Ad, in the garden of Eden, I, I don't know whether you remember that story where he told man to tend and to keep. You remember that one? He told man, tend and keep. Look at your neighbor and ask them, what do you do daily? Wait for an answer. So, God, what, what did God expect from us when he so empowered us among creation? What did he expect? Do you know what he expected? Do you know? He gave you responsibility. So you are expected to bring glory to him by continuous obedience to him. Because he has given you responsibility. Responsibility comes with a lot of, with, with a lot of obedience. So creation is waiting. All the entire creation is waiting for you to impact. So when I ask you what do you do daily, what I expect is you to say, is that whatever you do to impact creation which God has given you. Um, I said I want to give you some more stories. I have a lot of stories I wanted to give you. But I want to tell you a story of a boy. There's a gentleman who was, who was selling balloons. Whenever the, the business was solo, you see he's selling to children. He was selling to children, like when we go to Runa Parks, or when we go to, I don't know which one you go here, around here, which one do you go? I stop uh, talking about the far one. I can remember the ones I used to take them. I will not ask Mama Kare, but I know she was taking them where I used to take mine. The near ones were not there. Um, there are guys who normally have balloons, and they try to entice the children with either the color of the balloon, or how it can fly high. You remember that? So when business goes down, this businessman, what he would do, he would put one balloon helium. He, you know helium's rise is very high. And then releases the balloon. The balloons go very, very high. So the boy came and asked. One of the boys was moved by, by that and went and asked, if you release a black balloon, would it fly? Because he never released a black one. Because he wanted the one people can see when it is up there. So the boy went and asked, if you release a black balloon, can it fly? Can it fly? Why would it fly? The answer is in what is inside the balloon. You hear? Even you. Whatever drives you. Whatever makes you have impact is what is in you. Can you look at your neighbor and ask him what is in you? The, the other, number two, those who are writing, empowered to serve. This, we can find the scripture in uh, Philippians 2, 3 to 11. We can also find uh, more scripture on uh, Matthew 20, 25 to 28. There is one Pentecostal university. I, I asked the, the principal 
of Cornerstone, what is the slogan of the school or the motto? I hope all of you know because you are parents here. I expect all of you to be parents of this school. Are you parents? Thank you. I want to thank the parents of Class 8, by the way. It is a commitment to believe in a school. Cindy, it is also a commitment to ensure that your child comes to school every day because it's a service to God. You have been assigned that child by God and therefore ensure it is. So the, this college had a, a, a motto. The motto is empowered to serve. And the objective, because it is a Pentecostal, it, the objective was to reflect the service orientation of the Pentecostal church. So this university was empowered to serve. But were they serving? Then the question I would want to ask you is, but why? Why would anyone want to serve the Lord or be a servant? Why, why, why look at your neighbor? Don't ask them, but ask them in the eyes. But don't speak. Look at them and ask like, like how my pastor Washo would uh, look at me. Uh, why? why? Why would you? Huh? Why would you want to serve? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Or rather, why don't you serve? Why are you not serving? Why are you gifted and you are not serving? Our Lord Jesus Christ gives us the ultimate example of how variable servanthood is. He took upon himself the form of a servant. That is why God has given him name that is above every other name. And that we find in Philippians 2, 7 to 9. Service means, is, is the means by which God qualifies his children to share in his glory. By sharing in his suffering. Okay? So, when you serve, you are impacting. You, you see, you are empowered to serve. Like me, when I was um, small, I told you my story. I have many stories. Even when I qualified to go to the school with a motto, striving for excellence. And how many people know that school? Striving for excellence. It's the only national school which is mixed, so you know my school now. It is the on, those who selected, they know. The only national school which is mixed to date, that was my school. And it is doing very well. Um, when I went the first day, I was chased away. Remember my story. See, you remember my story, how I used to be last. Now I am top, and I have gone to Form 1. But the first day, I am chased away. Do they want me to actually to impact the world? Is the world against me? No. Maybe this was meant to train me. So that now, when I see other people in need, I'm able to come. For the class 8 parents, maybe you heard my name that I came and gave every child a pencil, a rubber, a danelisa. I'm sure you heard that and you are wondering which guy is this? is me. It's nobody else. I'm the one who came. I came and my wife who supported me so much. She was, actually, she was surprised that the number is small because I bought very little. I'm also surprised the number is small. Where are your children? Why are they not in Cornerstone? What did the Cornerstone team tell us? Cornerstone, the best school in Nairobi. In fact, I think it's class four. They were saying Cornerstone, the best school in Kenya. And I know they will be the best. Cindy, uh, head uh, principal. They will be the best. Now, um, so when I served as a small boy, I learned to serve through my serving. So I was chased away the first day. Why? I did not have shoes. I had never worn shoes before. That is why I walked here with the shoes on the carpet. <laughs> because I have not worn shoes before when I was small. And I wanted you to see that I am actually wearing shoes. So what happened is that I had never worn shoes before. But through, through that, I now know having shoes is not, is not a right. Sindio, food, shelter, and clothing, or is food, shelter, and health, which is a right now. But I do not have shoes. 
But that did not bar me from becoming an engineer I am today. The only thing which made me go through that particular school is because KCC, because we were selling milk, had written a check for the school. So my dad could not catch the check. So the, the school was paid from the proceeds of milk, and therefore I did not have shoes. So we had to go to the nearest town, and I got shoes on credit. Those are the shoes I finished from four with. So that tells you that when I see, maybe when I, came, I went to class eight, I found some boys with very small and some girls with very small pencils. Not this school, because you ask, you buy. But there are other schools. I have been doing this to other schools, not this one alone. But I find them with very small. We agree with them that the ones I have given you the week before the exam, please keep it in school so that you'll do exam with it. At least you are assured that child will have a pencil, a rubber, and an eraser. An eraser and also a sharpener to do the, the exam. See you on this hour. What are you doing yourself to serve others? A boy ask your neighbor. Today we are in class. So our empowerment to serve God begins with our new birth in Christ. When we become children of God, that is in Galatians 3, 26, and therefore qualified to be custodians, stewards, and caretakers of whatever belongs to God. So it is not just being born again. It comes with service. The moment you are born again, it comes with service. You become a custodian, you become a steward, and a caretaker. Imagine whatever you have, you are a caretaker. And you are given just because you are born again. So servanthood requires a lot of humility. It is, this is the attitude of considering others greater than yourself. When you are servers, you are considering others greater than yourself. It is a recognition that in serving a person, you are serving God himself. Do you remember what God did after he made man? What did he do? He blessed. So actually you are serving God. Don't, when you are serving your colleague there, the ushers, when you are showing us and cleaning the seats, you are not serving us, you are serving God. Washo, see you on the power. Kabisa. And uh, it is a pressure to making someone someone useful in doing God's will. So considering no service to others, you feel like it's indignified when you are not serving. Or you, when you serve others, you feel indignified. There are people who are very senior in, in uh, society, but they actually serve in church. They even clean the church. Why not you? Sindio? Because we are empowered to, to serve. I, I want to give you, I told you we will hear a lot of stories from this guy. Do you want to hear another story? I have another story of a boy. Boys, I love them. They are inspiring. There is this boy who was buying, who went to buy a, 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 an ice cream. He was given 70 shillings by the parent. And when he went to buy, you see, they are normally, there is one for 70, is the big one, and there is one for 50 bob, which is a smaller one. So when he went to buy, and because he was selfless, the boy asked, how much is the big one? He was told 70. The parent had given 70. The boy kept quiet and looked, went back behind and took his money, he looked at it, and then came back and said, give me the one for 50. And he was given the one for 50. After he took, under the cup, he left the 20 bob as tip. Can you imagine he considers the waiter as opposed to his self-gratification? This is a young boy, a cornerstone boy maybe. I pray that it will be a cornerstone boy. So we are praying that when you are serving, you are considering others over self. The third one is empowered to extraordinary things. Empowered to do extraordinary things. This, the scripture reading is in Acts 10, 
38, 44 to 47 for those who are writing. I may not read all of them uh, so that we are able to, to finish what I had uh, prepared. Sini mzuri, nisiache nusu. So we are empowered to do extraordinary things. Like for example, in the, old exam, in the Old Testament, you find that there are people who were anointed by God. Some of them were anointed to lead the people on behalf of God. They were called who? Kings. Kings were anointed to lead on behalf of others. Mweshimu Kenoti. I know you are looking forward to become one of our leaders. We pray that God anoints you to be one of our readers. So we should actually be praying for him and also seeking God to anoint him as one of our readers. The other one is that God also anointed others to present their sacrifices, to, to present sacrifices to him. When I want to sacrifice, whom do I go to? A priest. Who takes the sacrifice to God. That is in the Old Testament. That means God anointed this person to do extraordinary things. And these people are the ones who are going to offer sacrifices on behalf of the people. You find that the third category is that there were also others who were anointed to hearing his direction for them. And these people are prophets. It's a class. Today is a class. These men were capable of doing extraordinary things just because they remained in the spirit. Sin query. How about those who failed to remain in the spirit of God? What happened to them? If you look at the first Samuel 16.1, there is a guy there called Saul. Munamjua. What happened? Samuel was asked to go and anoint a son of Jesse. You know that story? Because what he did was not honorable to God. And therefore, when God, when you don't do the right thing, or you don't use the anointing for God's glory, you will not do extraordinary things. You will actually be removed. And that is what happened. You'll find that even uh, Samuel was fearing when he wanted to go and do anoint David. Because what happened is he asked God, what will I tell so I'm going to do? He, he told him, God is the one who advised him to take a bull, a hiver. Is it a hiver or a bull? To go and sacrifice there and call and sanctify the family of Jesse. To So when you are anointed to do extraordinary things, please use it for, you ensure that you watch to walk carefully according to your calling. When you are called, you watch and walk carefree, according to your calling. The fourth one is that empowered for fellowship. For empowered for fellowship, we look at the uh, scripture on Galatians 5, 22 to 25. You'll find that uh, in, uh, here, Paul, in uh, 1 Corinthians, Paul writes of being made all things for all men, in order that by all means he might save some. So fellowship was important in this time. We are also, I'm also asking, as we perfect our relationship with fellow believers, do we normally have similar fellowship with God? Because we have been empowered we have uh, priests, we have prophets. These are meant to empower us so that we are able also to offer fellowship. And the fellowship, the fellowship is meant to bring us together. It is also meant to ensure that we are able also to identify the potential in others. So we endeavor to focus on the good and potential in others and do our utmost to forgive their offenses against us. So don't always keep grudges. Ensure that you forgive. 
Unanisamehe, si ni kweli? So that we remain in fellowship and also for the glory and honor to God. I would like us also to move very fast because I have realized the time is doing very well. Uh, empowered to empower. You are not just empowered to stay with that empowerment. Remember our topic was what? And now we are in the fifth one which is empowered to empower. We read uh, Romans 1, 8 to 12. It's a wrong scripture so we are not going to read it here. But I hope you are writing down you are going to read this, this calls for impartation. Impartation means what? What is impartation? When you are empowered, you impart the empowerment to someone else. It is not just to give. You see, sometimes we say uh, when you impart, you have to give. or let, Actually, it's to let others share in it. Whatever you have, you let others share in it. Like for our teachers, they have actually worked a lot to empower the young, the young ones in the school here. And that is why next year, or very soon, after two weeks or one, we'll come to celebrate the results. Because the teachers, they are empowered as teachers, and therefore, they are empowering. They are empowering the, the young ones. So I would like to say that it does not simply mean to give something you have to another. It is to make another benefit from what you have. Exactly what the teachers do. They have knowledge. But they make our children benefit from that knowledge. Even you in your workplace. Do you have some knowledge? Do you have a special competence which you keep for yourself? Is it the one which you think if you disclose to your colleagues, you will lose your job. Are you empowered to empower? And that is why you find in many organizations, they would like to attach an intern under you. So that whatever is in you, you impart and also empower the intern. So that they will be better than you. Because you know the future is uh, greater. So by the new birth, and baptism in the Holy Spirit. We are empowered to bring others to share the streams of living water. And that you can find it in, the, in John 7, 38 to 39. Where this, it says that uh, living water that flows from our bellies. So when you bring others to Christ, it's because you're already in Christ. So you empower others. So they share in what you have. So our work is to bring others to the source. Always look for an opportunity to bring others to the source. That is through preaching, teaching, and our lifestyle. And that is why we are asking, even in your office, do they know? Do they know that you have, you are a Christian? When I was working with the county government uh, a few years ago, we started a fellowship. I was one of the preachers in the morning every Tuesday. And even at some point when I was preaching, I sent an SMS to the governor and the deputy governor that I will be the one preaching tomorrow in the morning fellowship of the county uh, fellowship. And the deputy governor came. You can imagine he decided to come. He told me, Kegwa, I respect you so much. When you call me, I come. And he did. And that day I was preaching on, uh, I remember because he was, uh, he was touched and said, uh, you, you are trying to attack me because I was present. I was, <laughs> I was talking about using your office as a garden of Eden. Sindio. Where you tend and keep. So whenever you wake up in the morning, the Garden of Eden is the small office you have. Do you use it for glory of God? Do you use it for self-benefit? Or do you use it for gratification or for greed? Those are the questions I was posing to my colleagues. And therefore, as a, a believer, I wanted my lifestyle to be known that even if I'm there, I'm also 
a believer. So I wanted to empower my colleagues. So as a vessel, because you'll be a vessel then, if you are empowering others, you are a, ve a vessel. You will be willing to go wherever we are sent. You should be speaking what God has asked us to speak. When God tells us to speak, we should not shy off but speak. Sintio. We should be playing according to his will, laying hands as he directs us, all the while being a start by for him to do his will. So I would want to, I'll give you the story later, but let me first go to the last point. The last point is avoid, uh, avoiding the loss of empowerment. Avoiding the loss of empowerment. You remember First Kings 12, 2 to 17. This is where Rehoboam, King Solomon's son, the successor, how he misused his empowerment. He lost. You know that. What happened? He got counsel from the wrong people. He, the people came to him and he gave them. He did exactly like his dad would have done. As a, a good king, he told them, go for three days and come, I'll have an answer. Meanwhile, he was consulting. He consulted the wise men who were advising his father. Did he follow the wise men uh, counsel? No. What happened eventually? After he followed the young men, his playmates, what happened is that he lost 10 out of 11 tribes of Israel. And they were divided permanently. Rehoboam, he actually, uh, he overlooked at least three key things. One of them is that empowerment comes from God. And the impact that he expects is to bring glory to him through our obedience service. He lost that one. He overlooked that one. Number two, it is important to seek and keep or remain in good counsel. He overlooked that. He also, it was also important, the third one, it was important to remain humble. To and in fellowship with the people, he was empowered to serve. Can you see this guy losing his, uh, his empowerment? So I would like us, uh, before I end, I want to ask us to declare and do a pledge that I am empowered to serve. I am empowered of God to impact my generation. Can you say, I'm empowered of God to impact my generation? Number two, I'm empowered of God to serve my generation. Number three, I'm empowered of God to do fearlessly good for my generation. Number four, I am empowered of God to save and fellowship with others. So that all of us need to choose to live by God's grace. When we are talking about um, to empower others, I wanted to give you a story of a guy, an executive, who went to the railway station. There was a, when he, was, he went to the railway station, there was a beggar. So you find them everywhere. The beggar had a pack of pencils and a bowl. Then the executive, this is an executive, he wanted to enter the railway station. He threw some coins. Let's, in this case, we say it's a pack. So it's, he threw 100 shillings. And then he went inside the train and remembered, I have not empowered that gentleman. He quickly went out. You see, he's a beggar and took all the pencils and said they are priced correctly. And he went with the pencils. Can you imagine you taking away what the beggar has there and giving him the exact amount of money he would have sold there, the pencils? Do you know what happened? The beggar, actually, the moment the guy took away the pencils, he took away the shame of the beggar. Can you imagine? He took away the the shame. The beggar realized that he's indignified by sitting there. And actually he can sell pencils as opposed to begging. So that day he left and he started selling pencils. There was a conference a month or two later and they met at the conference. The beggar was wearing a nice suit and the, 
the executive who actually took away the pencils asked him, are you not the beggar who was at the station? He said, yes. You actually dignified me. You are the one who empowered me to be dignified. From that day, I realized I can do something not as a beggar, but as a person who is dignified and I can sell to someone. So I have actually been making more money selling the pencils than sitting at the station. So even you, you can empower others. You don't have to give them. You might also empower them. There was a, there was a lady who is a friend of mine. She stood here the other day and she was prayed for. Uh, that he, she has opened a business in Nagara. How many of you have gone to support her? I have not gone, but I promise to go. I'll buy a shirt there. But I'm asking you, how many of you have gone there? Do you want to wait until when she will not get customers? You are wearing shirts. Your husbands are wearing shirts. If ladies are not. But you wait the day she closes and you say, you see how business is normally very bad. You are the customers. Sini query. Go and order your shirt there. I don't know her. I don't know where she's seated. But if she's not in, tell her that nobody talked about her today. But we say that we need to serve to empower others. Sindio. So when you know that Mr. Gashuru can do your books, give him the books. Sindio. So that tomorrow we empowered to empower others. That is why you are running that business, so that Mr. Gashuru can do your books. Sini query. And on that, I want to beg that may God bless all of you. <laughs> uh, there is something I wanted to tell the class 8, but the time is up now, that you should position yourself for empowerment and all of us. Uh, you know what happened to the bride Bart Myers, all of you. You know that story. The bride Bart Myers could not see, but he kept his ears very sharp open. You remember? When he kept them open, he was empowered. He positioned himself to be empowered. He sat strategically. He shouted loudly. He took action. Sindio? Even some dream killers, they were telling him, go away, you are a beggar. You cannot see. What did he do? He shouted the name of Christ. And also he persisted and patience. Persistence and patience will pay. Because of time, I want to end there. And I would want to say that may God bless you. May God give us hope where we are in a challenging situation. Think about my story. Think about the story of all those stories I have given. And ask yourself, what am I doing to empower others? Am I empowered for fellowship and I don't attend? Is that? And fellowship is not just the one you go to church, the one you go to home sales. Fellowship, even in your office. What are you doing to impact your colleagues? Whatever you have, do you ask yourself, what I have, am I using for the glory of God? Remember where we began, the story of uh, at the beginning. God also was faced by those challenges. The earth was formless. It was empty. Your pockets may be torn. They may even be empty. Actually, when you throw your hand, there is no end because it's dark inside. There is nothing in your pocket. But you need to use what God has put in you, and that is the power of your tongue. Amen. May God bless you.